Thank you very much. Um, I think it will be just interesting for us to get started on this really interesting conversation with a quick round of call out by each one of you, a quick round of introduction on what you guys exactly do. Um, and uh, you know, if, if each one of you can summarize in one line what really the future of content creation is, it might just be an interesting way for us to get our conversation started. So Gaurav, we can start from there. Hi, so I'm Gaurav Jain. I work for one of the best brands in the world, which shall not be named. And uh, what the future of content is in one word would probably be uh, personalization. Thanks Gaurav. Hi, Hi guys, I'm Shogata. I work with Tata Communications. Uh, look after digital content, experiential and uh, performance media marketing. Uh, for me, to sum up the content of the future would likely be around uh, digital and experiential. Hey, hi everyone. I'm Gunjan. I lead a company called OML. We are probably India's largest independent uh, digital media company. We uh, produce shows, uh, long form original content shows for platforms. We produce branded content in 20 other countries and we work with a bunch of artists, some of you which I hope you follow. Um, for me, content is probably just hope and a lot of empathy because that's what the distribution allows for it to be. Hi everybody, I mean, uh, please search l l LinkedIn and here's my name, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, future of c content was, is, and will always be entertainment. That's the only one job it is supposed to do and that's what it will do. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Vivek. I take care of the branded content across Viacom 18 network. Uh, we are a setup which kind of create a fabulous content, short format, long format for viewers with a brand lens. And we work with a lot of people actually on the floor. So thank you for this opportunity, Sunny and for him for being here. Uh, I can say a very long line for what the future of content is, but for now, keeping the context, I think it's going to be immersive storytelling. Immersing coming in from creativity and platform and storytelling is of course what I think is content is all about. Hi guys, I think the future of content will be between the two Gauravs. It started with a Gaurav, is ending with one. And this is Gaurav Chandna, just kidding. Uh, I think, um, uh, you know, localization and also the use of music. Uh, like how, yeah. So, you know, with digitalization of music is just the beginning. The use of music is not fully tapped. I think we're not even started using it. Uh, I think that will be the future. Pretty interesting, right? Uh, six different perspectives on where future of content lies and I'm sure all of them will somewhere submerge together, right? So I think it's anyone's guess where this is going. Uh, I think to kickstart the discussion, Abhishek, I wanted to um, pick up a question with you, right? You spoke about entertainment as future of content, right? And you see this whole space where there's so much snackable content out there, you know, everything being possibly six seconder, 59 seconder. Um, as part of being uh, part of Shimaru and Shimaru Me, where a lot of it is long form content, um, where do you see are the challenges and opportunities of long form content where everyone is just, you know, struggling to find attention of audiences? See, uh, before that, I was also with MX Player and uh, for a launch to MX Tagatag, which was the bar of snackable content, right? <laughs> so I've seen both sides. Uh, the challenges and opportunities in c c content lies and the answer is with the consumer. You know, we can speak about it, we can say the challenges and opportunities are engagement, time span, eyeballs, uh, attention span, all of that. What we should solve for and what is our primary job is to make it the content discoverable. Audiences should know where, what and why to watch. Uh, we are just enablers. Technology is an enabler. It's a catalyst. The final de decision to watch and spend time which in other words, is also money lies with the people who 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 uh, you know come to your platform to sample it, not sample it. You know, according to me, content is neither good or bad. 
content is content. It, what makes it good or bad is how you mount it, how do you speak about it, who do you speak to, that is what makes it good or bad. Good for you might be very bad for me, right? Uh, it's very similar to how humans are born. Nobody is born good or bad. It is environment around him or her that make him good or bad. Similarly, every content has its own set of audiences, snackable, long form. What we should always remember is, which is uh, my, uh, uh, you know, my own finding is, long form content is always searched for. Short form is a surprise. Music is not searched for. The next song, you don't know what's going to come on the radio station. Snackable, when you keep swiping up, you don't know what's going to come next. That's a surprise. Long form is always searched for. And the attention time span is much higher in the long form than in short form. So content is content. Uh, the films are, have started doing 1000 CR anyways. So consumers and especially Indians have a lot of time to spend. Yeah, not maybe in Bombay and some of the other metros, but which is actually a follow-up piece that I wanted to check with you, if you don't mind, right? You guys are uh, big in the uh, regional space as well, right? And outside India as well, you guys have gone to multiple uh, countries. Uh, are there any particular consumer behaviors, because you already spoke a lot about audiences and insights around that. Are there any particular prominent insights that you're seeing in regional audiences and the way they consume their content versus Hindi and English? See, the, uh, the advantage, I mean, I'm going to speak the uh, open secret. When you are in the regional space, there is no number two. No number two. It is a first movers market. You look at Hoi Choi, you look at Aha, you look at Sun Next, you look at us. They will ne because the uh, headroom for number two does not exist. And regional uh, players or regional environment ecosystem <laughs> will always be the first approach to market will always be award Because award ke liye audience nahi to monetize. That's number one. What does not happen, which happens pan India, is regional audiences are much more loyal than pan India audiences. They exactly know what and why they come to Shamarumi or whoever, and they exactly know what to consume. So. My streaming mao, I mean, why me? I mean, for every other regional OTT, my streaming mao is almost equal to my overall mao, which is a very big advertising opportunity as well. So that's the primary difference. Some really interesting points. Um, and on this, Vivek, I wanted to uh, segue into a discussion with you where we spoke about one set of audiences with uh, Abhishek, where we said that there is regional audiences which are critical, right? But YCOM is known for doing some great work uh, in the youth specific market, right? Have you guys seen any specific, and you also are across multiple platforms, right? From digital to OTT and across. Are there any specific trends that you guys have seen, seen which are gonna lead the way for the future of content? Uh, yeah, so if I limit it, to content and the question that you mentioned youth, I think one of the journey that we've taken in the last few years is that our vehicle that we carry to the market for youth is actually MTV. And there was a time that I think all of us kind of grew as MTV as in the old form what MTV was, right? But then we realized that the content has to follow the viewer. And the eyeball started moving just from television to the shorter screen, the screen became shorter and shorter, right? So we've actually as YCOM been on the journey where MTV has transformed itself from being a television brand to actually a youth brand. Uh, you know, if you look at the content consumption which happens for MTV today on YouTube, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, every piece of content that MTV generates also has an OTT leg and has a huge, probably even higher amount of viewership on, on, on Geo Cinema. So I think what we've done is that we followed the DG 
in terms of creating what we wanted to create for them. And the transformation has happened. And the same is actually happening for a lot of other things as well. I mean, Nickelodeon, which is our premiership uh, you know, ticket channel, also has today a huge footprint on YouTube because YouTube is also becoming the by default screen mechanism for kids. So I think that's the journey that we're also taking. It's, it's about wherever the viewers and eyeballs are. We're a content creator. We're not a plat. And we have strength in terms of platforms across. So wherever the eyeballs are, exactly the space where our content is kind of moving to. Very interesting, you know, when you say that different audiences, different content, different platforms, um, which is where Gaurav, I think, with you and Gunjan, you know, if we can understand the overall perspective of, and OTT players, content creators, largely depend on creator hubs like yourselves, right? Uh, what is it that's seeming like, uh, you know, are the focus areas for y'all in terms of uh, content creation? Sure. See, the first thing that, you know, the <clears throat> challenge, I would say, is like, uh, we're basically advertising and we do for long format as well, is like, everybody wants, like, even the bigger players and all the players are looking for a smaller, snackable, like you mentioned, that's the flavor of the season reels, you know. But I just believe, and I just, this is what I tell everybody, like, even when we're doing a 30 seconder, you know, and they say do it in 20, or, you know, obviously the media money being one, so we always say, up these banalo. Because they say, no, I don't see anyone. If you look at one minute, I have researched it. So I always say, sir, if the film is good, then people see it for 3 hours and 21 minutes. And if it's not good, then no one will see it for 5 seconds. You know, and everybody, you know, said, Facebook has told me, give me a brand in 5 seconds, then finish it in 15 seconds. And everyone is doing it. We hear this, we hear this in the agency life every day. They have made a film of 7 minutes and everyone has seen it. And in that case, Facebook comes in the end. You know, so it's a classic case of don't practice what you preach. You know, so Bhagawan is afraid of it. He is behind, Bhagawan will give it. So Dev has become like that. So like, I think I would agree, like he said, entertainment. If you can entertain them, the audience will see 5 seconds and they will see 5 hours. And they will see you all together. You release the show for 10 episodes of the show. But at night, because when Netflix came, they said, we are competing against sleep. You know, and they won. Because it was interesting. You didn't see anyone like that. So it's just that. If you do it well, people will watch. Very interesting. I think Gaurav and me were having a little bit of a conversation around this backstage. Uh, on long form versus short form. It's always a battle, right? Uh, but Gunjan, your point of view on uh, this. Sure. I don't think I'm going to say anything different. But in the same vein of whether it is entertainment, for entertainment's sake or the fact that it follows where the target audiences are, what I am most inspired by today is the fact that uh, media agencies, creative agencies, production agencies have to come together because there is just a multiplicity of choice for the consumer itself. Today, each one of us are audiences of one. What's happening on my phone is by no, in, in no means replicated on another 40-year-old woman's phone who happens to be in the media industry as well and may also live in Bombay. There, we don't follow the same people. We don't watch the same shows. Um, my top apps are not her top apps. Um, and that is what makes the conversation interesting from the get-go. Even if you're making a 30-seconder ad, I think you, most of you may have already been exposed to the cred work that happened where every time there was an IPL break, you had a different yesteryear star from the 90s who was brought out. That meant you stopped using those breaks as loo breaks. Right? You actually sat down to see, hey, what's coming next? It was a very standard 30-seconder format. So I think all formats will stand as long as we're willing to have the difficult question of what makes those formats work. Yeah, pretty interesting. Um, and you said that media agencies, creative agencies and creators, uh, we also have brand custodians here with us. Uh, they are the ones who are spending the dollars most often. Um, Swagat, on, on that note, I wanted to pick a point with you. You guys have services on both sides, right? B2B and uh, B2C as well, right? Um, what's the strategy overall between the two sets of audiences, right? Because the way they consume, consume content 
a lot might be forced on them as well when it comes to B2B. Uh, but really interested because you have that side of exposure as well. How do you see that moving in the future? So, first thing, Sunny, uh, we don't do any B2C. Okay. We just do customer content. Okay. Uh, see, the, the insight, and Abhishek spoke very well about it. Uh, the logic behind it is that when you're creating content to sell, which is essentially what uh, we do, when you're con and con not to sell the content itself, but to sell a product on the back of the content, right? When you're doing that, the first and foremost thing that one needs to keep in mind is the fact that you're selling to an individual. He or she may be sitting on, the, on an institutional chair making a buying decision, but it is his or her, uh, you know, nature, insecurities, whichever way you look at it. And more so when you're at a, at a B2B institutional level where a deal probably can be in hundreds of millions of dollars. And if God forbid something goes wrong, uh, you know, careers are at stake, right? New organizations are at stake. So keeping those insecurities in mind, keeping, bringing out the honesty of the message that you're landing at the same time being relevant and probably given some entertainment, right? When I joined this company about five years back, there was a certain way in which content was created, right? And if you, if you spend some time looking at the way the stories are coming out today, you'll find that there is a significant difference because we are actually telling stories, right? We're actually telling stories by putting the customer in the center of what is the art of possible if they were to work with us, right? So I think that, and, that, and I'm talking from my agency experience also, that hasn't changed, right? What has probably changed is having moved to this side of the table, my ability to convince and sometimes even enforce decisions has probably become stronger, right? So to, so to go back to your uh, question, the strategy is be sim keep it simple, be honest, Respect and recognize the intelligence of the individual whom you want the content to be, to be seen by. And of course, be present at the right place at the right time, uh, either in, 30 se in the form of a 30-seconder or... Five hours we don't But maybe a 30-seconder or a two-minute or a two-and-a-half-minute film that we talk about. So that's how I put it. Nicely put, Sagato. I think um, customers can be categorized in whichever way. But uh, the way you guys see it straightforward, I think it just puts a lot of concentration in the right way, right? A lot of times we slice and dice things to assume that, you know, this will make things far more strategic, but sometimes a straightforward approach is far more uh, effective. You spoke about long form and three hours. Uh, there is Gaurav who's been doing content for a substantial amount of time uh, in the organization uh, that we don't speak of. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Gaurav, your perspective on uh, on audiences and how, uh, you know, you guys create content around that. I'm just going to echo what Shagata just said. Was, uh, I think you have to be honest to who your audience is and honest to who your, what your brand is about. I think that's first and foremost. Uh, so, you don't do things like buying influence or buying reach and things like that. You try and get there as organically as possible because you want to stay there for as long as possible. If... if, if uh, Someone can come in and throw more money and, and replace your name with your spokesperson or your influencer. And then there's not a position you want to be in. So fundamentally telling an honest sort of story and keeping your brand integrity intact, even when it's hard, right? Because it's hard to be organic. It's hard to be honest with the things you do. Uh, I think that's first and foremost. If you do that, whether it's short form, long form, snackable content, music, sports, whatever, right? Uh, I think it cuts across. Even with... Uh, fiction in cinema, I mean, if you're telling authentic stories which make sense to an audience, you're there, you know what I mean? Then, then the challenges show up, like, is discovery a challenge? Is personalization a challenge? You know, marketing is a challenge. So all those things are just steps to get the content surfacing. But to, just to get there, I mean, just be honest, know who you are and who you're talking to, the rest will just fall into place, I guess. So, I just add a point to what you said about the strategy, right? It's a very uh, interesting way to look at it. So, I'll, I'll, it's a story that uh, I'll say, there was, we were, we were writing a film, right? Uh, so, the agency comes back to us, three, four edits of the script, and somehow something was not sitting right, okay? So, again, coming back from the agency side, we are all friends, right? So, this gentleman took me to the corner and in our chaste agency way, expressed his displeasure to, uh, you know, the script getting rejected four times. And during the conversation, he himself came up with this idea, saying that, 
you are doing a lot of performance marketing these days. Do you want to me to put keywords in the script? Right? I said, why not? He says, what do you mean? I said, have you done any kind of research for the category which we are trying to write a film about? What is the customer's intent? What is the intent driven behavior that they are showing? And is your film stacking up to that? If it is, I'll, I'll sign up on it right away. And I'll give you twice the budget that we had, uh, you know, initially agreed upon. First, do that. I don't know what sparked. The gentleman went back, did what he had to do. I don't know if he actually did his research, but dove into his gut and made this happen. But that is probably one of the most high performing films that we created. This was done when we celebrated bringing internet to India 25 years back as VSNL in 1995. I'm talking two, three years back, this happened. That, that's one of the most watched films that we have ever made as a B2B company. It's crossed a million views. And for a B2B organization that's dealing primarily with enterprises, that's a different kind of a story. Nobody expected that to happen. So while we're talking about in, in entertainment and all the other things that we discussed, all very relevant point, I think sometimes thinking out of the box when you're actually creating the kind of content that you're looking to build, these things might help. Pretty interesting. We do a lot of conversations in the role that I run around measurement of content, right? And uh, the funny thing around it is each content piece is different. Uh, with the people that are in there, protagonists that are in there, the storytelling, up, down, various uh, ways of doing it. Uh, but still measurement is so critical in, in trying and finding one clear route or at least a direction in essence to how you put some method to this madness, right? And I'm glad that you spoke about uh, that aspect. Um, Vivek, uh, you know, Swagato also spoke about various audiences uh, that, are, uh, that are sitting, uh, you know, uh, and are consuming content around it as well, right? Um, with, uh, and then you did get a little bit of a perspective of, uh, from Gaurav and Swagato on, on brands and their perspective on content. Um, I've been on that side. And uh, I would love for all brands to get associated with content. But have you seen uh, with your audience understanding that there are a certain set of audiences where branded content makes a lot of sense? And there are a certain set of audiences where we should ignore it completely. Well, I hope ask, you don't get fired for the second part of the question. If you ask a branded content guy who should be doing branded content, the by default answer is going to be everybody. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> But, you know, if I just layer that aspirations with reality about what is happening in my mind, I think I'm going to look at it. Brand, branded content also actually a very vast definition. And unfortunately, unfortunately, nobody defined what branded content is, you know. So I'm going to take the liberty of just broadening up the encompass. So at, in my mind, there are two buckets at with how branded content is created, right? One part is where you already have a property or an influencer or a protagonist ready. And how the brand, for example, leverages it to use, use you know, to reach out to audience, right? Now that is a much, much wider pool, right? Because if you want to be part of a pop culture, if you want to reach a, an average domestic Bharat household in India, then those properties already exist. And we've also seen that the audiences in terms of, because the viewership is very high, the pool of brands who want to leverage it is also very high. So from an FMCG, you know, to anybody who wants to reach, you know, it can be a cosmetic brand, that pool is very high, right? And that we've seen it, you know, it comes in different forms, whether it's an influencer video or it's a brand going inside the show, that's a much bigger pool. The other side of branded content is where we create content with a brand lens, right? Where there is a, of course, content created for the viewer, but it's also subliminally, you know, fulfilling a brand objective. Now that is a much smaller pool, right? And we've seen that most of the brands who want to get inside are typical brands who have a more complex purchase behavior or they're trying to shape, for example, a purchase decision. So you typically see if you take one week to decide that product, it'll probably not be there. But if you take a month to decide it, right, that's exactly where this kind of bespoke content also plays away. So an automobile brand, an ed tech brand, an insurance company, you'll really see are where the decisions are far more complicated as against an impulse purchase is where that side of branded content is actually getting more stronger. So from where I see it, I think in reality, uh, it is very relevant for brand for brands to invest into content because in this information clutter, it's one way that you can attack the head and heart together. Uh, but in reality, yes, the pools is kind of divided between two buckets. One bucket, which I think everybody is leveraging. The other pool, which is smaller, but is increasing and we want it to increase even further. So are you saying it's more objective defined rather than audience defined? Mid and bottom funnel be more content focused 
Is, is that what you're uh, suggesting? Yeah, to see, the difference between branded content and content is that somewhere you have to find that nice balance of what the viewer wants and what the brand wants, right? So, yes, I mean, when we think branded content, the difference over viewership is we first put the brand lens and then we identify, okay, now keeping that into mind, how do I still engage with the audience? Because people still have to watch it. So, yes, the first pivot to operate is, 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 is the, what the brand objective is. And then comes the challenging task of making sure how do we still make it viewable? How does still it is content and not an advertising film? So if I could jump in on that, um, while I definitely agree it's objective based and always will be, um, I believe what digital has done has actually crashed the funnel. I think you have the same content piece that can do the job of awareness building as well as lead straight through to commerce because commerce is also digitally enabled today. And that's definitely something new that all of us are dealing with right now. I think I'll just jump in and say that it's content's content. I mean, when you're saying it's branded or non-branded, it's a very industry term that we are using because we have jobs and we have segments that we got to take care of. But I think the way to look at it is if somebody's watching on the other side from the audience or a consumer side, how are they looking at it? Is it entertaining? Is it informative? Is it fun to watch? Should I watch it? Do I want to watch it? I think that's what matters. The brand ethos is relevant, brand visibility not so much, and uh, is it sort of again honest, if it doesn't make sense, those are the things that you look at, whether it's branded or non-branded is completely a, a, a corporate thing I would say. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> to say, uh, to adding what even Sohato said, like, you know, like the keywords thing you mentioned, so very interesting, see, uh, see, basically whatever we do, it's commercial art in the end of the day, you know, so there has to be art and there is a commerce attached to it. So the communication of it, like the keywords or anything or the brand uh, story or the brand ethos, like we can always put it in. It's a meaty goli, 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 it's a meaty So it's, it's a bit like that, I feel. Uh, but uh, it can be done like, like uh, even <coughs> Gunjan said, today content can be anything like entertainment, yes, information, yes. It has to be of use. To who's watching? If he's sitting there and he's just mundane, he's just going through anything, there's a different story. I think it's much like even you meet someone, you know, you meet, until the person is talking is of use to you, you listen, right? And then you are there, but you just zone out. You know, at times your friends also say, hey, what are you go to your phone, you do something. So it's just, you know, of being used. It can be entertainment, it could be information. And at the same time, if it can be of use to the brand, that we have a communication and we have some value to the consumer. I think we've done a job. It's very interesting. You know, I think everyone on the panel is saying uh, that content is content and you need brands to be seamlessly fitting in there, right? Uh, I think I started this journey on content about eight years back. A lot of brands were not having these conversations and I'm, I, I'm quite, uh, as in this side of the panel, I understand saying that, but that side of the panel also saying that is, is great progress that I think the content journey has made. Um, uh, we spoke a lot about branded content and I think the latest in branded or unbranded content is also how tech is getting enabled and activated uh, in content, right? And I would like to start off with that side of the panel to understand, you know, how you guys are seeing tech uh, enabling actually engagement of content with audiences, right? Because that's what a lot of it is doing right now. Uh, so any thoughts, Gaurav Sagata, who wants to go first? So, um, absolutely, uh, it's a fair point. I think there's two sides to it. One is that uh, whether it's sound in cinema, whether it's color, whether it's VFX, things like that, they're all tools and you're still telling the story you're telling, whether you're telling it in 30 seconds because of the platform's uh, limitations or it's a two hour, two hour story. Uh, I don't think it makes a difference. You just use the latest tool that's available to you to either automate, save yourself time, save yourself money. I think that's fundamentally what it is. But at the same time, I think if you just take it a step further, like personalization is something we were talking about. I think it's gonna fundamentally change how content is consumed. I think you're moving from uh, mass communication to mass personalization. So it's fundamentally shifting. So how that's gonna pan out, I don't think we know because I don't think it's really made an impact yet. Obviously you have these, uh, you have content on, on Instagram or you're listening and watching something and everybody's watching that very, very quickly because it becomes popular and the algo is serving it up to you. But I think that's gonna get sharper and sharper as things go on as more data gets collected. 
And that's when it gets interesting because then how do I create content for 400 million people which caters to each individual one of them, like Gunjan was saying, uh, you know, no two 40 year old women in media are the same. Well, that would go to just about anybody in the world, right? Then how do you create content which communicates to all of them? I mean, is it more interactive where you're actually part of the storytelling? Is it not? Is it like, uh, you know, sort of drip down where you're creating the story like you always did and people who find it interesting find it interesting? Um, no real answers there, you know? It's just like I think it's evolving at a very rapid rate and we'll see how it pans out. But I mean, tech enabled is what it is, whether it's surfacing the content or storytelling itself, uh, it's gonna be a big part of it, so. So you said personalization and interactivity, right? But I think what I was really keen to also get a uh, keen perspective on is, while I think a lot of content creators are quite excited about this whole tech ecosystem, as brands also, are you seeing that as something that's sustainable or are you seeing that as something which is a bubble or a fad and it will die down. No, absolutely. Again, as brands and as people who create content for a living, we just look at it as telling stories. We don't look at it as, oh, this is branded content, this is unbranded content, right? It's just stories. So if some tech or AI involvement makes my content stand out or helps me visualize what I'm thinking in my head, fantastic. But there'll be a lot of stuff which we won't use at all. But at the same time, you're trying to also predict what the algo is doing so it might pick up what we're putting out there in social in some way or the other. So there's a lot of human intelligence that does go into it because a lot of this stuff exists out there. But it's like, do I know how to use it? Or do I know how to sort of uh, find the right sort of uh, input to get the right kind of output that I require? You still need people to sort of come in and hit that red button in the end, right? So it comes down to that in my opinion. But as far as when you're looking at it, I'm just looking at it as a story which can reach as many people as possible. Everything else is an enabler. Quite interesting. Uh, so so I'll just give an analogy. I, in my personal opinion, uh, tech, I believe, is like the share market. Just like you can't time the share market, right? Similarly, you can't, uh, you know, define a role for tech saying I'll use only this or that vehicle to build content, right? And, and I think Gaurav put it beautifully and I'll just rephrase it. Tech is an ingredient that goes into your recipe for creating the content, right? What, what role it has to play is, is, the, is what you decide because the output of that content, the outcome of that content is something that you've already decided. And only then you have started on the journey to make that content, right? But where tech has a very important role to play, I think personally, is how you surface that content, right? Something which two, three years back was, was a buzzword, right? And people who used it right uh, actually, you know, got some significant uh, upsides from it. But then that got, some, you know, kind of shafted because of uh, various policy issues was audio fingerprinting, right? Now, if you think that's a beautiful example of tech where I know with what cues I want to surface what kind of my content, right? Other thing is tech make, tech, tech is another great enabler. The whole, I mean, personally, I believe that a company like Netflix is not great because of its content library. That's one aspect to it, right? There is, there is better content probably in Geo. There's better content probably in Shamaru, depending on the audience we're talking to. Netflix is great because of its recommendation algorithm. Right, it, it gives you content that you want to watch and, and lose sleep, like uh, Gaurav said in the beginning, right? So it's about how you use tech rather than getting carried away with tech tech per se. At the start of the discussion, I said that for me, the next big thing in content is virtual, uh, sorry, is digital and experiential. Tech has a huge role to play there. But if we say that I will create a store in metaverse and because I have to create a store in metaverse, then we are doing a disservice, right? If that store helps, why not? So that's, that's what I would say. Hence the initial analogy of you can't time the share market. You can't time what tech or you can't put tags on this tech is to be used for this or that, that tech is used to be, to be used for that. This is what I would say. Yeah, I think interesting point on using tech in the right manner. And I think a lot of times we're guilty of forcing it down, uh, you know, because it's such a new thing. So when, so your uh, estimation on when the Modi Dandia video came out, I'm, I'm hoping that you saw that. Uh, it was with generative AI. Uh, good thing or? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, Sunny, you've made plenty of metaverse pitches in the last <laughs> two years. Two years ago, probably, right? So. Yeah, you had a 
point, Abhishek. No, I had just two points, and for that, I wanted to share was something that I read somewhere. Uh, coming to your uh, Netflix example and the content, so there's a fundamental difference between a brand and a product, right? When some other OTT does not stream, the audiences and the consumers say uh, they are not working on tech, they are very bad on product, the why are they not investing, bad engineers, bad UI, bad UX, blah, blah. When Netflix doesn't stream, it must be my internet. That's the brand. It's not the product. Netflix also offers. Have you ever, as consumers and viewers, uh, said, yaar, kya bakwas? You don't say it. You say, it must be, my internet must be slow. You, you have 100 Mbps, but nay. That's the difference between, that's the fundamental difference between how consumers, viewers, your bread and butter suppliers are seeing you outside which you don't even realize, number one. Number two, uh, I'll just say it, I always say this example, I mean, quote this example, it's my example, it's IP. <laughs> uh, see, I'll say it from an OTT POV, right? The fundamental difference between a TV channel and OTT is for a TV ch ch channel, the brand or the genre is defined by the content it shows. Saaz bo to TC music hai to music channel, sports hai to sports, all of that, right? It is defined, the brand identity is defined by the content it has. OTT has everything. Then who are we? Number two. Three is anything that was invented to add convenience in consumers' lives have always done well. Mobile phone, nobody wanted to wait for the landline to convenience. OTT was one example. Television ke samne appointment viewing. No, you had entertainment on the move. That was, and that is why broadcaster OTTs were the first ones to uh, come out. What happened in the process is uh, from a second screen, the ecosystem tried to be the first screen of entertainment. Tech is an enabler, but what is the consumer asking? He's only asking for convenience. We have named a self-inflicted problem as innovation, AI layout, ML layout, metaverse, Can you, are consumers asking that? How would a consumer know snackable content bhi hota hai? Humne diya hai. And then we have created a, a, a issue and a problem and we are trying to solve it. Is the consumer asking, uh, consumer is only asking for Convenience, all we need to do, everything that we do has to enable that. And the last piece, sorry I took a bit of a time, but I had to say it. Uh, we are in a business of content and entertainment. Excel statement, we should have been in the bank. Excel happens when we do the PNL. And PNL can't be in black if you don't do your primary job well. Pretty interesting from a platform standpoint. Uh, Vivek, uh, from a Viacom's standpoint, uh, do you how do you see tech enabling? You know, we heard a lot on how Shimaru is seeing how tech enables uh, audience interaction. How do you guys are uh, foreseeing this? Uh, the whole tech innovation space. See, I'm just going to add to what. Sorry, sure. I'm just going to add to what uh, Gaurav and Shogata was saying. You know, one of the things I think tech does, and I'm. No, I'm taking the liberty of speaking both as a content creator and as a platform because we kind of do the both. But uh, when we create content, what genuine advantage the tech adds it, it just makes the content interactive, right? It just, you suddenly are not a static linear content which is somebody's watching on television. You start enabling people to engage, right? And that engagement can be with the broadcaster, it can be with the platform, it actually can be with the brand also which comes on board. So it does gives us a far more engaging uh, hands and legs in terms of the viewer's mindset. You know, we have, for example, I mean, we just, from a branded content lens, we used to do this uh, films with one of the alcohol brands where we do these brand films where we're using our big boss protagonist and we do it every festive to festive. But for one of the festive last year for New Year's, we've turned everything into AI led where you can actually share personalized, uh, you know, uh, New Year wishes. 
spoken to you by the protagonist, right? Now, it's, it's something which everybody's doing it right now, but the TG where that we spoke hit very hard. We had about 100,000 uh, people who actually created wishes and we just recently won a WMC award as well. So the point that I'm saying is that just by tech, tech just enabled that static brand film into engagement, which suddenly became a you know consumer to consumer things. On the platform side also, like, you know, we've always evolving and looking at those opportunities where the content can therefore become engaging, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a engagement with the brand through WhatsApp that, you know, for example, today Geo Cinema enabled or right from the times of Woot where we used to have shop the look that you can do or simple things like, you know, play along CFE when you're watching KBC. It just take making that content that but more engaging and that's what as a broadcaster and as a content creator we strive to do. We want the consumer to stick to us as soon as possible and I think engagement really goes multiple levels in that and tech is a big enabler in that. Yeah, so uh, I think brands have said that um, uh, tech needs to make sense for audiences. You guys, I think, pretty much mirroring that conversation as well. I think from a creator standpoint and uh, 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 whichever way, um, you know, how are creators looking at the whole ecosystem of uh, AI, generative AI content, you know, actually creators can leverage it quite a lot, right? Uh, what are you hearing from the whole creator ecosystem? So for creators, and I think what they represent today are probably younger, more nimble media brands in themselves. Um, and them leveraging technology has always been the way. So if you look at the way art and culture have evolved, they have always reflected evolution in technology. So whether it was Renoir using yellow lead in oxide for his yellow in the paintings to, you know, the Bible getting published by the Gutenberg Press, tech has always led the way for content to be distributed. I think for creators, while tech can definitely give you more avenues of distribution and um, almost also sharpen the brief because you're getting a lot more feedback now, um, I think the human uh, creative aspect can't be taken away. And for them, that endeavor will always be to make sure there are two things that you get out of the content you put out in the universe. One is recognition and the other is remembrance. And let's face it, all creators want that, all brands want that. It's literally the two things that you're gunning for, whether it's tech enabled, whether it's discovery enabled, whether, whether it's tech that's telling you, hey, this is now shareable, snackable content. None of that matters as long as it's remembrance and recognition that you're going for. So <clears throat> I'd just like to add, you know, like, uh, so there's a lot of talk around AI, okay, you know, tomorrow, and what open AI will do when, you know, Bill Gates will do when tomorrow, it'll control us, but I mean, it's just a tool, you know. And tool is for used for convenience, just like a hammer, a nail, it's a tool. And it has really worked, you know, what it does, like for example, we do storyboards and send, you know, uh, to clients with BPM. This time we did it uh, animated like a storyboard from uh, Mid Journey. And the client was extremely, extremely happy. You know, and it people- Saves time as well, right? Saves time. Yeah. As well, yes, and uh, it's uh, maybe a little cheaper down the line. But more than that, it was just, it looked better. So, you know, it's a little wow factor that tech gets to the clients, to the consumer, like a deep fake and uh, Cadbury huge Shah Rukh Khan. And you know, like, a Ratan store is saying Shah Rukh Khan. And you know, saying like, um, this is Falana Rajesh Medical. And they are getting really wowed about it, you know. So I think that's the main thing of AI. And tech has always been right from you know, right from the time I think it's sliced press. You know, once you got a knife, you just cut it better. You know, so, uh, and it's just that. And, and that will always continue to do. It will evolve till finally it takes, you know, us over and all that. I hope I'm not there by then. <laughs> because I'm a control freak. <laughs> so, yeah. Amazing. I think uh, a lovely conversation, guys. Um, I think we could keep doing this, but we're out of time as per the prompter. Thank you very much for being a, a great panelist. Thank you audiences for hearing us out. I'm hoping that you guys are taking some key uh, outputs of the discussion over here. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sunny. Let's give uh, them a big, big round of applause.